Welcome to another Shop the Sephora sale video with me where I'm gonna be adding as many items as I could possibly want to my cart and then slowly talking myself out of buying as many items as possible so that I could adhere to a strict budget. Normally I give myself a budget of $200 during the Sephora sale and I can flex a little bit if it goes to like 220, it's fine. This year I'm gonna stick to between 150 and 200 and I'm not allowed to go past that limit. Two days ago I was laid off from my corporate job after five years. So since I don't know when I'm gonna get another job, I wanna make sure that I'm really not going past the budget that I set for myself. So if you find that the hype around the Sephora sale can really get to you and you end up buying more than you need, this is just gonna be a good reminder video for all of us that you know we can get sucked into all the Sephora sale hype and we can wanna add all the products to our cart and we feel this scarcity mindset that we have to participate in the sale. But the reality is it's just beauty and nothing is worth putting yourself in a difficult position financially just for some beauty products. Per usual, this video is sponsored by In Beauty Project, letting you know that you can shop their products at the sale. In Beauty just launched a new sunscreen called the Mineral Sun Glow SPF 40. 43 PA++ with peptides and vitamin C. And it's great because it's a mineral sunscreen that comes in two shades. There's a fair medium and then a medium deep. If you want a longer review, I featured this in my top 20 best products at Sephora video. It's so good that it made that list immediately and I'm extremely picky about sunscreen. It's $35 and it has 14.2% zinc oxide. I was scared at first because this is called sun glow and I have combination skin. I do not like when sunscreens are really glowy or wet looking. So I was pretty nervous to try this, but it actually has a natural skin like finish. So it's not matte, but it's not Dewy. The glowy part comes from just this little soft focus glow, kind of like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, but not nearly as intense. So it gives you this soft evening out of your skin tone. There's a very subtle rosy tint to it that I love, and it feels so thin and creamy and spreadable. It's incredibly lightweight, and it feels hydrating without leaving your skin being wet. It's not greasy. It doesn't make my skin get dry. There's no white cast on me. It's fragrance and essential oil free, and the best part about it is this is the most soothing sunscreen I have ever tried. It totally beats the Live Tinted Hue Guard, which previously was my favorite soothing sunscreen. And I'm shocked because this has vitamin C and normally vitamin C really irritates my skin. For some reason, this actually seems to calm my skin when it's irritated. I don't know how they did it, but it's incredible. And my partner John has been using it every day as well. And we have totally different skin types. So I think it'll work on a lot of different people. Again, check the description box if you want a longer review. So if you want to participate in the Sephora Savings event, you can use the code YAYSAVE if you have a Beauty Insider, VIB, or Rouge account. And that's happening April 5th until the 15th. All right, so I have 38 items in my cart right now and it's $1,147, which is far over budget. So the first item I really want is the Ulla Henriksen Pout Preserve Hydrating Peptide Lip Treatment and Cocoa Creme. Now, I love this formula so much that on my coffee table, I always have the original flavor. If you like a cushiony lip balm, it is fantastic. It just feels plush and cushiony and nourishing while still remaining lightweight because it has a little bit of slip to it. And then they launched some tinted shades with new flavors and I was so excited. This Cocoa Creme shade looks good on everyone and I'm really intrigued by a cocoa creme scent. However, I don't need any more lip balms. I already have a bunch of Fitgo lip serums in brown shades, and I find that I don't really reach for brown a lot. I find that my complexion needs something a little bit brighter. So as much as my heart wants this, I know that it's something that once I get it, I would like it, but it wouldn't become the product that I reach for all the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that from my cart. Next up, we have the Dior Contour No Transfer Lip Liner, and I already am familiar with this pencil because I have the shade Brown Fig, which they frustratingly discontinued because it was a fantastic shade. I'm planning a lip liner deep dive as one of my next ones. And so I thought nude look sounded good, but it looks very, very peachy in the swatches. And as I swipe through the pictures, I just want to find something that's a little bit more cool toned. I just get so frustrated by luxury brands and their very artificial swatches. I mean, this looks like someone did it in Microsoft Paint. There's just no way that that's an accurate representation of the colors. And I don't want to spend $35 on a color that I have no idea what it's going to look like. So I'm going to do some research online before I purchase this. So removing that from my cart. Next up, we have the Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense SPF 30. I've talked about this a million times on my channel. It was also featured in my top 20 best products at Sephora video. This sunscreen and the In Beauty are my two favorite sunscreens right now. The Paula's Choice has a very lightweight texture that sets to a soft matte finish. So that's the sunscreen that I wear underneath makeup. For whatever reason, when I'm wearing makeup, my skin gets much more oily than when I'm not wearing makeup. So I prefer the In Beauty Sun Glow sunscreen on days when I'm not wearing makeup and I just want something that feels really calming and lightweight, but hydrating on the skin, and then I wear the Paula's Choice sunscreen underneath makeup. I'm on my very last drop of the Paula's Choice sunscreen, so I absolutely am keeping that in my cart. I've been waiting for the sale to purchase that. Then I saw a new launch from Sephora Collection called About That Shine Sheer Shine Lipstick. It's $16 and I have the shade 11 Cosmic Coral in my cart. I've been looking for a bright pinky coral lipstick and I have yet to find my perfect shade. So I really wanna try this because Sephora Collection is 30% off during the spring savings event. However, I have to put on my critical thinking cap here. When I reflect on my past purchases, 
purchases from Sephora collection. I really have never truly loved a lip product from them. There's always this kind of perfumey taste or they just smell intensely like crayons or I just feel like the colors haven't suited me very well. So I don't need to waste my money on something that I'm probably not gonna end up liking anyways. So that is an easy one I can remove from my cart. Next up is the Moroccan Oil Dry Shampoo for Dark Tones. I absolutely need this. I'm about to run out of mine and this is my favorite aerosol dry shampoo. I love the way it smells. It doesn't leave a white cast in my hair and it does add a little bit of texture without making your hair feel like it's all of a sudden super dirty and really gritty. It's pretty lightweight and I also love the smell so I always pick up one of these during the savings event. And then I have another Dior lip pencil because I want to do that lip liner deep dive. And this is the shade 720 Icon which is a rosewood shade but again as I swipe through the pictures here it looks like it's probably going to be something similar to Makeup Forever Wherever Walnut. It looks kind of like a brick brown in the swatches. It doesn't look like rosewood and there are no reviews yet so I can't look up any user submitted pictures and there's surprisingly almost no swatches online of the Dior lip liners. So while I do want to pick it up during the sale because I can get that extra savings and that would help me in preparation for my lip liner deep dive, it's $35 and I just don't want to be buying something when the color swatches are always so off. So that I'm removing from my cart. And the next thing I have is a recent launch. It's the Necessaire Rosemary Shampoo for Thinning Hair. This is $28 and I have heard about the benefits of rosemary applied on the scalp and it can help with thinning hair. I don't necessarily have thinning hair, I just have very thin hair. So I thought, hey, maybe like something like this in my collection wouldn't hurt. And when I scroll down, it does say that it's color safe, which is great because I dye my hair blonde. Ooh. Okay, so I scrolled to just the verified purchases on Sephora because I want to filter out all the people who are incentivized for their reviews. And all of them gave it three stars for people who have thin, oily hair, which is what I have. So I might keep this in my cart, but Okay, don't do this. Don't do this. You just lost your job. You don't need extra products. Okay, let's exercise that muscle of control. L'Oreal recently sent me a PR package. I have literally four shampoos and conditioners right now. I absolutely don't need this. I'm just intrigued by the marketing. But realistically speaking, what's it really gonna do for my hair? I'm not so sure. I feel like it's probably the kind of thing where I should just use up the shampoos that I have and then I can purchase this when it comes time to have a shampoo, which is probably gonna be two years from now because I have so many. So during a normal savings event, when I had my normal corporate job, I probably would have kept this in my cart. But given the fact that I need to be a little bit more careful and cautious of what I'm spending right now, I am going to move this to my loves list and I'm gonna circle back on it another time. Yeah, shit, now we have the Orbe Dry Texturizing Spray. This is another product that I always get during the spring savings event. I do have a brand new bottle of this that I just opened. And so I probably am not gonna go through that for a few months. And so I think the smart thing to do would be to remove this from my cart because I I have a brand new bottle already. But Oribe is expensive. It's $52, but for me, nothing beats it. It is the best texturizing spray that I've ever found. It smells really good and it adds texture and volume without weighing your hair down and it doesn't make it feel stiff. It's truly just the loveliest texture spray. So I'm gonna keep it in my cart for now, but we'll circle back to it. If I need to eliminate it later, I can. It's just nice when you can get expensive products at a discount, but there might be other products that I want more. So that includes the Benefit Cosmetics Benetint Liquid Lip blush and cheek tint. And I was in Sephora in Santa Barbara for my birthday in February and I saw the shade Love Tint and it was this juicy like bright fiery red and it just looked so stunning and you know I have a lot of different lip stains because I've been planning this whole K-beauty deep dive that I'm about to shoot but the Benefit Tint and Love Tint was significantly more pigmented than pretty much any other tint I've ever tried. So I'm really intrigued by this color. I think I'm gonna keep it in my cart for now because I've been eyeing it for about a month and a half. Moving on we have the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Liner in the shade Buff. Like I said, I'm planning a lip liner deep dive, so I wanna to try to buy as many formulas as possible for that video, and it would be great to get them on a discount. However, when I was in Sephora in Santa Barbara, I tried the formula on my hand, and it just was super gummy. It was really like heavy. I noticed that all of the lip liners on display had dried out, and I swatched a bunch of the shades, and all of them were super, super warm. So I'll show you a picture of Buff. It does not look like that at all. I was really hoping this would be like the most natural lip liner shade that would be great for a nude lip. It was a lot darker and a lot more peach in person. So I just don't think that this is going to be a lip liner that I would end up using a lot. So 
we are gonna remove that from my cart. We're down to $1,024. And then I saw that Charlotte Tilbury launched the collagen lip bath in Pillow Talk Fair. I recently purchased the Pillow Talk Fair lip liner at a Charlotte Tilbury store in LA. And I've wanted to try the collagen lip bath for a long time. It looks very smoothing. It seems like it has a thicker formula. Like just according to the pictures, it looks like it has that high shine finish and that kind of smoothing appearance that I really like. But looking at this color, which is the one that I would be interested in, that looks exactly the same as Naturium Petal. And nothing beats the shine and the smoothing quality of the Naturium Vital Glow lip balms for me. And they're like $5 or $10 or something like that. So why would I spend $35 on a lip gloss that's probably not even as good as the Naturium ones? So I'm going to remove the collagen lip bath from my cart. Oof, this is what I really want. This is the Corez Greek Yogurt Probiotic Super Dose Face Mask. This is $55 and I'm hesitant to spend $55 on a skincare product I don't know if my face will even react to. My friend Alyssa, who is my glow twos on Instagram, swears by this. She wears this mask literally every morning after her morning run. And she says it's just ultra soothing and moisturizing. And so I've wanted to try it for a very, very long time. However, there are some flower extracts in the formula and sometimes those can irritate my skin a little bit. So I'm gonna see if I can get like a small size somewhere or a sample on eBay. Sometimes those are really helpful if you can find them. Ultimately, I want to try this, but I don't need it. And so I'm gonna remove it from my cart. Ooh, I'm excited about this next one. This is the Rare Beauty Mini Soft Pinch Liquid Blush, and it's only $14. I picked the shade Encourage, which people have told me is a near exact dupe of my beloved matte beauty blush wand from Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Pillow Talk. But Pillow Talk is a little bit more sheer, and the Rare Beauty blushes have a bit more pigment to them. So I'm really interested in trying this out. If I could find a more long lasting version of the Charlotte Tilbury blush and Pillow Talk at just $14, that's absolutely worth it. At the same time, I do not need more blushes. Since I already own Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk, why would I need Rare Beauty and Courage right now? I even have a backup of the Charlotte Tilbury Blush and Pillow Talk because I was worried that they were gonna discontinue it when they said it was limited edition. And it is now a permanent shade, which is great. So I guess I really don't need this. I already have Pillow Talk, so why would I need a dupe of it? Seems like the kind of thing where I'll purchase it when I run out of Pillow Talk. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. I don't need it, even though it's only $14, I, I don't need to spend extra money right now. So that one is gonna go. Hmm, this next one is kind of tough for me. Okay, so we have the Urban Decay 24 seven Glide On Waterproof Lip Liner in Liar. This was a recommendation from a bunch of influencers who said this was a really good cool toned shade. I did swatch it at Sephora and it didn't really seem that cool toned on my skin, surprise, surprise, but it's $25 and I have owned this lip liner formula before and I loved it. It was pigmented and really creamy. The lip swatches make it look a lot darker than the way it looked in person. So I don't know. It is the kind of product that I definitely wanna pick up for my lip liner deep dive, but I don't even know when I'm gonna film that video. So it's possible I could find it at a better discount on Urban Decay's website. I'm gonna keep it in my cart for now. We're just, we'll, we'll keep it in for now. If you've tried the Urban Decay liner and liar, let me know what you think of it. Next up, we have the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Big Lip Plump Gasm Plumping Lip Gloss. Oh my God, these names are ridiculous. This is $35 and it's a new plumping lip gloss. I was actually walking by the Charlotte Tilbury store at the Grove in LA the other day when we were in town for a concert and I was in immediately drawn in by the marketing campaign. I'll put in a picture here that I put on my Instagram stories. And I loved the way that the model's lips looked. Obviously, she already has naturally beautiful, perfect, plump, big, symmetrical lips. So the way that the product looks on her is not the way that the product's gonna look on me. But I was excited because it looked stunning and it really did have that glass-like shine and that smoothing effect that I live for. But when I went inside and I swatched the colors, they were super peachy. The Pillow Talk Fair shade was literally just like a light peach. And then, the medium deep shade, which is described as a brown berry pink, looked really much more like a peachy brown on my skin. If this product made me look like the model in this picture, then I would totally pick it up. I'm so tempted to buy this product because of the way that the model looks. But I just know that this specific pillow top color is not for me. And I heard from a few influencers that it's a very, very spicy product, and that always irritates my lips. So I'm gonna avoid that. We've gotta be ruthless today. So that one is gone. And I also have the new Kissing Lipstick from Charlotte Tilbury in Pillow Talk Fair. Now I'm gonna put up a picture here of all of the new lip products I swatched at Charlotte Tilbury. You can see that the Kissing Lipstick is like a light peach. It looks nothing like the lip liner in Pillow Talk Fair, which I absolutely adore. It's described as a cool nude pink and it absolutely is not. I would describe it as a light peach, at least on my skin. And I have cool undertones. So if something isn't as cool as the undertones in my skin, it's gonna appear warmer on me. But if you have warm undertones, it might actually look pink on you. So 
So it totally depends on what your specific complexion is. I just know that when I went to Charlotte Tilbury and they swatched this on my hand, it was not for me. I'm wearing a little bit of the lipstick and candy chic today. And this one actually is a cool tone pink. So we're gonna remove that. And now we're down to $850, still got quite a ways to go. The next I have is again, the Ula Hendrickson Pout Preserve Hydrating Peptide Lip Treatment, this time in strawberry sorbet. God, I'm a sucker for this one. I've had my eye on cocoa creme and strawberry sorbet ever since it launched. Man, I really want it. But you know, looking at the lip swatches of strawberry sorbet, I don't really see it looking all that special. Like there's barely a tint. It just gives them the tiniest little flush of pink, but it looks mostly clear. So is it really worth me spending another $22 when I already have the clear one? I mean, I don't think so. So despite my temptation, I'm gonna remove that from my cart. Ooh, now we have a new launch that I'm really intrigued by. It's the Armani Beauty Prisma Glass Hydrating Lip Gloss with Squalane. Sometimes Armani sends me PR, so I'm really hoping this one comes in the mail. I just love a sheer lip gloss in this light, cool pink. This color Berry Beam looks so good. The packaging looks chic and beautiful. It just gets my little luxury heart a flutter. And then when I look at the lip swatches, I just get even more tempted because look at that glass-like shine. It just looks like water on the lips. It seems to really smooth lip lines, and that's the kind of formula I like. Let's go to verified purchases and see the reviews. Only three verified purchases. 296 reviews and only three of them were people that actually purchased the product. It's just ridiculous. So out of the three, one person said my new favorite lip gloss. Love the simplistic packaging, the beautiful pink, perfect shade. Not sticky, very shiny, feels hydrating. But then another person said, I'm not a five star so-called influencer. I paid for this. So here's the real honest review. It's no big deal. I really wanted it for the hydration and the color. Really out of my price range, but I gave it a try. The one be influencers who got this for free should be ashamed of themselves. I should have waited the usual few weeks before I bought it. This is just my honest review in all caps. It wasn't really much of a review. They didn't say why they didn't like it. Then another person who purchased it said, gorgeous, but nothing life-changing. For this price, I would rather purchase Westman Atelier's lip gloss. The consistency is great. Pigment is very light. Again, beautiful gloss, nothing I would call home for. That's kind of what I was expecting. Let's look at the ingredients list to see if there's any like plumping in there. Okay, looking at the ingredients list, I don't see any fragrance or essential oils or any kind of menthol or plumping, so, oh shit, this is kind of the lip gloss I would want to try. So I'm looking through the reviews of the Armani lip gloss and I get so annoyed when people say, smells good, pleasant smell, but they don't say what it smells like. Like a bunch of people are saying like, smells good, but they're not being specific about what it smells like. People seem to really like it. So since it's $38, I'd like to get it during the sale. I'm just gonna keep it in my cart for now because I've actually been looking for a pink lip gloss that's a little bit shimmery and reflective and fun. And the shade Berry Beam does look like what I've been looking for. So I'm gonna keep it for now. Then I have the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat Lip Liner in Pillow Talk Fair. And I'll drop in a B-roll clip of me applying it here because I did end up purchasing it at a Charlotte Tilbury store and it is exactly the color I wanted the original Pillow Talk Lip Cheat to be. It's almost exactly the same shade as NYX Mauve, but it's a little bit lighter and a little bit warmer than NYX Mauve. But it's a great color. It is a mauve pink shade. It looks fantastic on cool tone skin. I feel like they really did nail the Pillow Talk Fair lip liner. I just don't like any of the other Pillow Talk Fair colors that they launched alongside the Lip Cheat. So since I already have this, I am removing that from my cart. And a product that I know I am absolutely getting is the Lawless Forget the Filler Definer Lip Liner. It's $21 and I have been eyeing the shade Pink Slip. When I went to the Sephora at the Grove, I swatched all the Lawless lip liners. And this looked like the cool pink I was searching for. It was a bit brighter in color than NYX Mauve or Pillow Talk Fair. And I wanted to include this formula in my lip liner deep dive. So I'm definitely gonna keep pink slip in my cart. Moving on, I saw that Laura Mercier launched the Ultra Blur Talc-Free Waterproof Translucent Setting Powder. $52? That's really expensive for a powder. Laura Mercier, $52 for a powder? Am I reading that correctly? Please tell me someone in the reviews called that out. That is ridiculous. So someone's review is just, it's pretty meh. Clung to dry patches. It's okay. Didn't get a blurring effect. Not groundbreaking. Just okay. Yeah, no, at $52, I am definitely not buying this. Plus, I already have my powders that I absolutely love. When I'm filming and I need something heavy duty, I love my Fit Glow Hyaluronic Acid Powder. And when I'm just going about my normal day and I don't need something intensely mattifying. I like my M Cosmetics Portrait Mode Powder. And then on the go, I have a little mini Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter Powder. So I'm all set on the powders. I definitely don't need this one. This next one I'm really tempted by. Okay, the Urban Decay Face Bond Self Setting Waterproof Foundation. I have the color nine, which is a light cool shade in my cart right now. And this looks like a liquid formula in kind of like a dropper. It looks like a similar packaging as the Fenty Ease Drops, which was a formula that I hated that really emphasized texture on my skin. And it, it for some reason, it just really didn't look flattering on me. 
damn, the picture of the model looks really good. And I love Urban Decay because they did an unretouched before and after, which is finally, would love to see more brands do that. I think it's great. You can see still a little bit of her texture, although she doesn't have much. The models look really, really good. I'm intrigued by this because it sounds like everything that I like in a foundation. It's liquid, it has medium coverage, it self sets and has a matte finish like that shit. Do I need to get this? Verified purchases. Hmm. The reviews are pretty mixed. So I'm going to keep it in my cart for now. And then we're going to come back to it once I have gone through the whole cart. Up next, we have the Laneige Bouncy and Firm Radiance Boosting Sleeping Mask. It's $36. And I'm just a sucker for when I hear the word bouncy. Like when I hear bouncy or plump, I just think of like the most hydrated, wonderful skin. It's just frankly a marketing term that works really well on me. <laughs> there was a Laneige pop-up at the Grove when I was in LA and I got to try this and it was one of the most fragranced products I have ever tried. It was like a very intense floral perfume smell and I hated it. But if you are not sensitive to scents, the texture was really lovely. It did feel like one of those kind of like bouncy sleeping packs and it actually dried down to a satin finish. Like there was no dew on whatsoever. It felt just kind of like silky and bouncy, but it had more of a matte finish. So I don't even think I would have liked that texture on my skin. I do want something that's a little bit more intense at night. So I'm gonna remove that one from my cart. That's an easy elimination. Now we have the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Gloss in Juicy Watermelon, and these are $26. It's actually one of my favorite lip gloss formulas. However, I had a tube of the shade Velvet, which was a gorgeous cool-toned pink, and it went bad in about eight months, which was really disappointing. It started smelling real funky. So for me, anytime I can find a, a color of a lip gloss in the Naturium Phyto Glow lip gloss range, I will just inevitably reach for the Naturium anyways because they're so nourishing and they're very stable. I've never noticed mine starting to expire. I am totally a sucker for this bright pink shade and I know so many friends who love it. The formula is super thick and juicy and cushiony and it is quite sticky so it's long lasting which I love and it totally gives you that glass like smoothing shine. Truly I think it is one of the best lip glosses that money can buy but because it expires so quickly and I know myself I own a lot of lip glosses I just don't need more unless it's a color that I don't already own in my collection and I think the shade hibiscus is a perfect match for this for Lawless so this one just doesn't make sense for me to purchase and I'm going to remove it from my cart. However the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Gloss in Popsicle and Sex Pot are two shades that are only available on the Lawless website and those are the ones that I'm eyeing, particularly that Popsicle shade, but there's no swatches or like TikToks of any of those shades online. So if you've specifically tried Popsicle, please let me know what the color looks like because I never trust a brand website. I definitely wanna check the Lawless website to see if I can get Popsicle at a discount because I've been eyeing that for a long time. Then we have the Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez Soft Pinch Luminous Powder Blush. It's $26 and I was gonna get the shade happy and then a PR package arrived at my doorstep and Rare Beauty sent me all of them. Unfortunately, these are an absolute nightmare on my acne prone textured skin. I'll show you a quick clip of one of the shades up close. You can really see just how insanely metallic this formula is. And I applied it just based on the way it was marketed with the directions. I used the brush that they provided. I didn't apply a ton and it is just far too metallic as a blush, but it's way too pigmented as a highlighter that you could use all over the face. It really only only works as a blush topper. And I just find that luminous blushes these days really emphasizes texture on my skin. I prefer to have control over the glow. I'd much rather have a matte blush and add just a tiny bit of shine at the tops of my cheekbones. So sadly, this product didn't work out for me. I have a ton of friends who are influencers and they have perfectly smooth, clear skin and the product looked really great on them. So I would say if you have textured skin and you don't wanna highlight that texture, I would skip this product. If you have very smooth skin and you're not really concerned about how metallic it is, then I would say it's a great product. So that one we are gonna remove from my cart, which means we're now down to $663. So we have quite a ways to go. Next, I am really interested in the Lawless Make Me Blush Velvet Blush in the shade Sakura. I'm sure some of you are gonna be shocked that I don't already own a color like this, but I don't. I do have a cream version that's very similar the Kulfi Mendy Moment Cream Blush in Pinky Promise is like a corally pink, but I've really, really wanted a powder version of that color, and this is perfect. I swatched it at Sephora, and it looked stunning. It is definitely that pop of coral pink for summer that I really want. I have been waiting for the Sephora Spring Savings event to purchase this. It's $29, so I definitely want to get it at a discount, and this is one that I really do want to keep in my cart. So we'll circle back to everything later, and then we have another blush right now, the Clinique Cheek Pop Blush in Black Honey. Now, if you missed my nude blush deep dive. I'll leave that link to the description box below, but basically I was searching for a powder version of the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wand in Pillow Talk, and a few people recommended Clinique Black Honey to me. It looks very dark in the pan, but in the swatches I've seen online, it actually does 
look a little bit more like a nudie mob. The only issue here is I have so many freaking nude blushes now that I can't really justify the cost of buying something just because I was looking for a powder blush of another color that I already own. I've gone to every Sephora possible to try to see if any stores had the Clinique Cheek Pop blushes and they don't. I think I'm gonna have to try Ulta next because I know Ulta does carry sometimes bigger Clinique displays. So I'm gonna eliminate this for now. I'm just not feeling that inspired by it and I would much rather own the Lawless blush in Sakura as we're heading into summer. The next product I have to talk myself out of is the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Vinyl in Sheer Lotus. Now this is $26 and there have been a million different iterations of the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Balm line. This one is supposed to provide much more of a glass-like shiny finish and have a thicker consistency. Most of the reviews I've seen have said that this is nothing special and it's just way too thick and gloopy and heavy, but I was lucky enough to try one of my friends recently and I freaking loved it. It was thick and cushiony and it totally provided that smoothing gloss-like shine, like the Lawless glosses, like the Naturium Phytoglow lip balms, like the Amicule lip oils. So I really, really want this and the color that my friend had was Sheer Lotus, which was a perfect, gorgeous, like bright, but sheer pink. Oh my God, I want this so badly. However, critical thinking cap on, I don't like the coconut scent. And I have already talked about in my beauty products I'm no longer buying video that I'm not going to buy lip products if they have a scent I know I don't like because I inevitably don't end up reaching for them. Now it might be a little bit different here. I never reached for the original Tarte Maracucha Juicy Lip Balms because they didn't provide that smoothing finish I like and they were just kind of okay. I probably would reach for Sheer Lotus a lot if I had it, even though I don't love the coconut scent because it's like a nutty coconut. It's not, it's not like a fresh or like a pina colada coconut. The really nutty coconut is not something I enjoy in makeup, but I need another lip balm like I need a hole in my head. So we're gonna remove this quickly. Oh, I had another shade of the Armani Beauty Prisma Glass Hydrating Lip Gloss with Squalane in Cherry Glaze. If we look at the lip swatches, this was what kind of intrigued me about this color. It just looks so shiny and beautiful and I really wanna try one, but I do think if I'm gonna pick one up, the Berry Beam color is gonna be the right one for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove Cherry Glaze from my cart. Unfortunately, my cart got a little rearranged on the Sephora app, so we're gonna have to go out of order here. But I also saw that there was a very intriguing launch from Gwen Stefani's brand, Give. It's their Dewy Plump Collagen Lip Gel. That sounds really Really similar to the Figlo lip serums because those have collagen in them and they're like this gel-like cushiony formula. And this comes in a bunch of fun bright colors. So I have my eye on Bouquet, which is this like coral pink. And this looks like it would be a perfect match to go along with the Lawless Blush in Sakura. And I don't own a perfect coral lip. I've been looking for my perfect coral pink lip for a while and this looks like the exact perfect shade that I've been looking for. So I really, really wanna try this. There are no reviews on Sephora, so it, it could be a little bit risky buying this without seeing any reviews or any content online about it. But I'm just such a sucker for a lip gel because I know that means it's gonna have that cushiony, non-sticky formula that I absolutely love. So I'm definitely gonna keep this in my cart for now. Okay, we're going out of order here, but now the next one I haven't talked about yet is Ellis Brooklyn Mini Sunfruit. So I do have a travel size of the Ellis Brooklyn perfume in Sunfruit, and it's just like this tiny skinny thing that fits in your purse really easily, but I did want a mini bottle to kind of stand up next to my perfumes and I'm about to run out of that travel size. So this is my signature scent when the weather is warm and sunny. It is just one of the most beautiful perfumes I've ever smelled. I'll leave a video in the description if you want to know a full review of Ellis Brooklyn Sunfruit. It is just delicious. And I thought it would be really nice to get this one, which is $25 and it could just kind of stand up next to my other perfume bottles. But because I have my travel size, I don't need this right now. So I'm going to go ahead and remove Sunfruit from my cart. We're down to 545. We have a lot of work to do. Okay, I want this one too. This is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Under Eye Color Corrector in the shade Cherry Blossom. I saw someone use this the other day and it looks like the perfect pinky peach corrector for my skin tone. A lot of times correctors are either way too bright, like even the concealer that I'm wearing today that's my usual really good shade match is just too light for me. But oftentimes if I go darker in a concealer and I get my perfect shade match that isn't brightening, it inevitably ends up looking yellow. I need something that has pink undertones, but for light skin not fair skin. This is just a long-winded way of saying this color corrector could really help me out when a concealer is a little bit too bright for me. But it's $30 and I don't need a corrector right now. I actually don't have really bad dark circles. I just prefer a more full coverage look and I'd like something to help me adjust a shade when it's not the right match for me, but it's not the product that I absolutely need. What's great about this shade is it does look super pink and a little bit peach, which I think would be a really, really good color for a corrector for me, but I just don't need it right now. I've also had my eye on the Charlotte Tilbury Kissing Satin Shine 
Sunshine lipstick and Rose to Flame for quite some time. They sent me the Kissing Lipstick and Candy Chic, which I've been absolutely loving, but Rose to Flame looked like this beautiful pinky berry. That's another color I've been kind of searching for for a while. However, when I swatched this product on my hand at Sephora, it looked nothing like the marketing campaign. It looked like a beautiful pinky berry in the photos, but in person, it was like kind of dark and muted and just, it wasn't as, as beautifully bright as I was expecting. It actually looked a lot like the little swatch at the bottom more than the colors in the campaign. So because of that, it's just simply not something I need to purchase. Next up, I had an In Beauty Sun Glow in Fair Medium in my cart because my partner John has been using mine every single day and so my tube is getting low. Unfortunately, they're out of stock of the Fair Medium shade as I'm filming this right now, but I just got a PR package at my doorstep today and In Beauty sent me backups of the sunscreen. So I'm very grateful. Thank you, In Beauty, for sending me extras. I'm so glad I can save money on this purchase right now and hopefully it comes back in stock soon because I really want you guys to be able to try it. I'm at 447 right now, but I haven't applied the code Yay Save yet. So let's see what happens after I get my 20% off for Rouge. So it's down to 381. We're gonna have to do better than that. I've been eyeing the Anastasia Beverly Hills long lasting velvety matte lip liner in muted mauve for a long time. I saw a bunch of reviews on TikTok saying that this was like the perfect nude liner for light skin. So I'll pop in a picture here of some hand swatches when I went to Sephora. You can see the makeup by Mario liner in Dimitri. That's the one I really want as well as Smoky Pink, but for some reason they've been sold out for months and I'm super bummed because I've been wanting them for ages. Somebody said that the Anastasia Beverly Hills lip liner in Muted Mauve is similar, but as you can see, it's darker and seemingly a little bit warmer than Dimitri and it's definitely not mauve at all. Like who is naming these products? In what world is that a mauve? I mean, it's just, that's a whole rant for another day. I'd like to include this lip liner formula in my deep dive, but I think I need to do a little bit more research on what color from Anastasia would be the right one for me. Muted mauve just seemed a little bit too warm for me, so we're gonna get rid of that. I saw a new launch this morning. It's the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Mattifying Water Powder Serum with niacinamide and hyaluronic acid. I have no idea what this is. They say it's a mattifying water to powder serum that primes, absorbs shine, and visibly refines skin with Comfort Matte Complex, a unique blend of seven potent ingredients. It has kale and clay, which is usually mattifying niacinamide, tremella mushroom extract. The thing for me though is, I mean, it's like kind of a primer, but kind of a serum. So I'm confused about where it goes in your routine. All it says is just tap into the skin. So I don't know that I would want to put a serum on top of my polish choice sunscreen when I'm wearing makeup. Let's check some of the reviews. Interesting. Okay. Three people in the verified purchased reviews on Sephora said that it didn't keep them oil free and it broke them out. That's enough for me to wait and try to like try it at Sephora and just like tap it into my skin and see how I like it. It's just, my skin is just way too tricky. I don't even want to mess with it. So I'm going to remove that until further notice. Next up, we have the day fairy duster volumizing dry shampoo powder. It's $30. I've always wanted to try this brand. What intrigues me about this is it says it lasts 600 pumps, which replaces four aerosol cans. So like four of my Moroccan oil dry shampoos. So that has me pretty interested. It has a citrus scent, which I could be into. Let's see what the reviews say. Whoa, it's like one stars across the board. What is happening? Okay, so everybody seems to love the smell, but they say it's very gritty and heavy on the scalp. Oh, somebody said it's strong floral. Mm -mm, that's a pass for me. That's a pass. Somebody said made my hair feel very dirty. Someone said, yep, a lot of buildup in the hair. Meh dry, horrible texture. Okay, yep, that's enough for me to remove it from my cart. So right now I have a Moroccan oil dry shampoo mini in my cart and I don't need it right now, but I have five weddings that I'm attending this year and four of them are for my content creator friends in the beauty space, which is just such a wonderful heartwarming experience. And so I wanted one of the mini dry shampoos for when I travel for those weddings. But honestly, I have a feeling I'm just gonna wanna trim my cart down as much as possible and I don't mind spending $12 full price when it does come time for me to travel. I am gonna go ahead and remove the mini dry shampoo. Then we have the Jisoo, 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 Jisoo Honey Infused Hydrating Lip Oil. Now I heard the first one, Honey Gold, people said was terrible. Everybody said it smelled like vegetable oil, which hard pass for me. But then they launched tinted ones that have like yummy scents. And the shade Strawberry Sorbet is very much calling my name. Just look at that picture. Look at that like wet looking shine. I'm such a sucker for that. But that is a heavily edited picture. And it looks like they piled up the product on there to get that shine. So I don't know if that's how it would actually end up looking on the lips. If I zoom in on all of the lip swatches, now I can see there is barely any color to these. And I certainly don't need another clear lip balm or lip oil. And if this is the kind of formula that's a true lip oil and it's thin and runny, then I don't want it because I don't like lip oils. So as much as I was initially intrigued by this product, it's just not something that I need in my collection. It's sheer, it's probably gonna be thin and runny and not the texture I want. So I would rather save my money.
Uh oh, I'm at the end and I've gone through everything in my cart. So we are gonna have to get a little ruthless here. The first thing I'm gonna do is eliminate the Aura Bay Dry Texture Spray because I just cracked open a fresh bottle of that and it does usually last me a few months. So I have no problem paying full price for it if I need to just place a one-off order in the future. So I'm gonna get rid of that because that's gonna get me to 212, which is pretty good. I want it to be in the 150 to 200 range. Oh my God, Urban Decay is doing a 25% off sale. No brainer. Okay, so I'm gonna move the lip liner and the foundation to Urban Decay's website because that's 25% off. So with the Urban Decay foundation, removed and the Urban Decay lip liner removed, I'm down to 160. I know that I've been eyeing the Lawless blush in Sakura for a long time and I have thought about that for months and I really want it. So I'm going to keep that in my cart. Scrolling down, I know that I want to pick up the Lawless Forget the Filler liner in Pink Slip. I've been eyeing that for months. I need a backup of my Paula's Choice sunscreen because I'm about to run out and I'm about to run out of my Moroccan Oil Dry Shampoo. That leaves three opportunities to eliminate another product. The Armani Lip Gloss, the Benefit Love Tint, or the Give Dewy Plump Collagen Lip gel. Shit, I want all three of these so badly. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. The bouquet color from Give Beauty, the collagen lip gel, looks exactly the same as the Lawless Blush in Sakura. And I've been looking for my perfect pink coral cheek and my perfect pink coral lip. And I have yet to find the perfect shades. These look like exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm keeping those. That means if I want to be under 150, I have to factor in tax that Sephora always adds on. So I do need to eliminate another product here. And it would either have to be Benefit or Armani. I've decided I do want the Benefit Love Tint. So now it's down to if I'm going to purchase Armani or not. And I think because so many people said it smells good, I need to figure out what that smell is. If it's a smell that I like, then I'll purchase the product. If it's not, then I'm going to eliminate it from my cart. Okay. Scrolling through the reviews. Oh, here we go. Here's a clue. Somebody said, I noticed when putting the product on, it feels kind of thin and it's more oily than I'm used to. I like the shine it gives. However, I don't think it lasts very long and the oiliness isn't something that I enjoy. Bingo. That is exactly why I do so much research on products and new launches, because if this is just like a lip oil, I'm not going to want it. I like thicker products that have a little bit of a tacky or a sticky finish so that they're longer lasting. And I always find that the thicker a product, the more it kind of smooths lip lines. I don't want something that feels like a lip oil because I don't want lip oils. So damn, as much as I really wanted kind of like a sparkly iridescent lip gloss, I feel like Rem Beauty actually has some sparkly lip glosses that are a really good price point and I could probably try those instead. Hmm. Oh shit. But then somebody else says it does have a little bit of a stickiness to it, which is a shame because otherwise I like the lip gloss. I really like stickiness. So is it thin and oily and slippery or is it sticky? Somebody else said it's a lighter formula and it's very hydrating. It needs to be applied often. Okay. I think it's going to be too oily and thin for me. I do. Mm, feels hydrating, but does require reapplication frequently because it gets absorbed. Yeah, that sounds like a lip oil. Here we go. Yep, another review that says it's oily, but not too oily. If there's any oily feeling, I'm not gonna like it because I like something sticky, damn it. That is the validation I need to save my money. And I'm gonna remove this from my cart because I know that as beautiful and gorgeous as that glass-like shine looks and that beautiful pink sparkly color is something that I've been really wanting to buy, I know myself and I know that I'm not gonna reach for that formula. So I have to remind myself not to get sucked into new launches and thinking that something would be my new holy grail just because of the marketing campaigns. Because when I really think about it and read the reviews, it's probably not for me, which means I'm down to 129 and let's scroll down. So after taxes, it comes out to 138.99, which means I did it and I stayed under budget, well under my $200 budget. And I feel really good about my purchases because I have a couple things that are just staples I'm going to run out of and a couple things that are new launches. And that way I get to have a little bit of a nice balance of both. I'm not sure if I'm going to end up purchasing the Urban Decay foundation or the lip liner. I just have to do more research on those products. So that's TBD, but I did just want to mention that Urban Decay is doing their 25% off sale. And before you place an order during the Sephora Spring Savings event, always check the brand websites directly to see if they have better sales going on. Let me know if you participated in this for a sale, what you're eyeing, what you purchased, or if you're just kind of over it. Thank you InBeauty for always sponsoring my Sephora shop with me video. Hopefully by the time this goes up, the sunscreen and fair medium will be back in stock because it's just an absolute holy grail. I'll leave my most recent video on the screen for you. It's my Sephora recommendations. It's the top 20 best products at Sephora in my opinion. Thank you so much for watching. Happy conscious shopping and I'll see you in the next one.